I'm Jessica of The Needle and Floss, and welcome back to my floss tube channel for my bi-weekly cross-stitch update, which now features a little sprinkling of knitting. I almost said yarning. I don't know what yarning is or if it's a thing, but I knit on the side as well. Um, I have some whips to show you. I have quite a few new starts and then a little bit of knitting progress. Last week was my main, uh, where I got the majority of my stitching done. Um, it was really a normal stitching week, I think. Like I did my normal amount of stitching. And then this week life happened. Um, I'm in North Texas and it's been a week. It's really been a week. We were one of the lucky few. I mean, actually, out of all of our immediate friends and family, we were the only ones to not lose power. My parent, my mom, my husband's parents, all of his brothers and sisters, and he comes from a really big family, um, they all lost power for at least 24 hours. I think every one of us had frozen pipes, which <laughs> Texas, when you, when you build houses in Texas, you don't really account for freezing weather. So houses aren't really built to withstand super cold temperatures. So typically whenever it gets below freezing, especially at night, we run our faucets at a drip and open all the cabinets just to help keep the water flowing just a little bit and um, help the air circulate around the pipes that at least are accessible to environmental air. Um, but I think every one of our houses had frozen pipes in my family, um, two of which bursts uh, or two houses had burst pipes and there's quite a bit of property damage with that. Um, my brother and sister-in-law, their entire kitchen is flooded. Everything's ruined in their cabinets. Um, on top of them not having power for, you know, 48 hours with a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, our furnace stopped working on top of our frozen pipes. It was only one section of the pipes that were frozen. Um, we believe that our upstairs bathroom, the pipes run along an exposed wall that probably isn't insulated very well because whenever they were, whenever there was no water coming to those pipes, uh, we didn't see any signs of frozen pipes like under the sink or anything. And they weren't cold to the touch, so we knew it had to be in the wall. Thankfully, the next day, water started running again. Um, but by that time, we were sheltering uh, a different brother and sister-in-law with two little boys, so our nieces and nephews. But um, we were helping them shelter and stay warm while also just constantly checking in with all the rest of our family to make sure they were safe and warm and had food. Um, our furnace stopped working. <laughs> so even though we had power, we didn't have heat. <laughs> that was fun. Um, we got it fixed. Thankfully, I, I think I was on the phone for, I think I was on the phone for an hour and a half or two hours calling maybe two dozen places. Uh, just trying to get an HVAC guy to come. We found one. He was able to fix it temporarily so that at least the heat would get run. Um, and then he came back a few days later and did a more permanent fix. Uh, yeah, it's been really stressful. It's been a really stressful week. It's weird to see, it's weird to live in a situation like this 
and it be all over the news and then it's on national news and then it's on international news. I mean, it was pretty bad. Um, I'm mentally and physically exhausted from my, that past week. It was pretty crazy. Um, and we were one of the lucky ones. That's the thing. And like, I have this guilt because we didn't even have it that bad compared to so many other people. Like not even talking about the family that I just talked about, like friends and coworkers, they were all in a similar position where they had no power. And I know of at least one of my coworkers who also had a burst pipe that caused substantial property damage. So it's not just, it's not just anecdotal, like it was happening to everyone, which is so bizarre. And now thankfully again, our part of the Dallas-Fort Worth area is not affected by this, but um, my mom is in terms of needing to boil water to have safe drinking water. We're told that that should be done. I think the water should be safe to drink by Monday but I don't know. Um, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy week. And that's all to say, <laughs> I didn't really get a lot of cross stitching done this week. I did learn something about myself though. Um, I think because I've been cross stitching for so, so long, um, it doesn't distract me in the way it does before. Like I can cross stitch and watch a show super, super easily and not miss any details. Um, with knitting, I have to be paying attention because I'm still making sure I do a knit stitch correctly, right? Like my knit stitches look pretty good and my pearls look pretty good, but it's just, you know, like I don't wanna have an extra yarn over or whatever. But I realize that because I need to pay attention to knitting more, um, knitting was my distraction this week to help keep me sane. So that's what I'm going to start with. <laughs> um, this week, well, first off, I do have a knitting finish and this finish was actually the Thursday before it all started. I finished my hat, <laughs> which came in handy because of the freezing temperatures. So, um, it was actually really fun and really quick to knit up. I used acrylic yarn. I really don't remember what yarn I used. It was when I first started knitting, uh, I had reached out to Shiloh with Cross Stitch MD to basically give me any tips and tricks that she could because she was the one who inspired me to knit. And so she pointed me to Carolyn at Off The Grid Needle Arts and said that she had a really great knitting tutorial. And she essentially put this huge series together to help Ginger Gerald uh, of other floss tube fame learn how to knit. So I started following along. So this is actually the hat in that series. And it was fun. It was really fun. It was really easy. I'm going to make another one with better yarn. But uh, before I did this hat, I had practiced with dishcloths and my dishcloths were fine. They weren't perfect. The very first one, it, they're supposed to be square. Like, a, like, you know, you know what a square looks like. Um, mine did not look square at all. <laughs> so I knit two dishcloths this week, uh, mainly just because I had extra dishcloth yarn that was 100% cotton. So I actually have a really nice looking dishcloth that I knit up. Now we're not a family who uses dishcloths when we do the dishes. So this is actually going to be going to one of my sisters because she uses, uses washcloths for her little boys in the bath. So these are going to her. So there's this one. Um, this is the dishcloth I made two of already. So I was very familiar with this pattern. But then for my next dishcloth over, <laughs> 
I, I finished that one and then I immediately started another one because I just needed to start keep knitting. So I found a pattern on Ravelry, which I will include below in case you want to knit this. It was a cute honeycomb dishcloth. My husband said that it looks like scales. So a scale knit cloth or a scale washcloth could also be a, a good description. <laughs> but yeah, those were, those were my knitting finishes of my nervous knitting this week. And then once everything started to kind of normalize, today's the first day, I'm filming this on Saturday. Today's the first actual day we're getting above freezing temperatures. So like everything's starting to melt. We don't have any snow anymore. It's crazy. I, I don't like cold temperatures um, anyways, but I have never been so happy with it being in the 30s right now. Like it's ridiculous. But yesterday, the weather conditions were getting a little bit better and I actually got my knitting needles that I was waiting on to start my pair of socks that I wanted to knit. And this is also from the uh, tutorial that Carolyn did. And this is my progress. So I'm knitting top down and it's just a little one inch cuff. The pattern calls for two inches. Um, I don't know, I like my cuffs a little bit shorter, but yeah. It's coming along pretty well, but this is all stuff that I've done before. Like this is essentially like what knitting the hat was like. Um, we'll see how it goes whenever we get to the heel. But I'm using a yarn from Knit Picks. This is Stroll Tonal in Eucalyptus from Knit Picks, if I didn't say that already. So yeah, I really like it. I can't really compare it to any other yarn because I'm not really that experienced of a knitter. It's my first time using fingering weight. From the reviews, it seems like a very light fingering weight and I would have to agree, but again, I'm not very, I'm not a very experienced knitter. But when I did first knit a gauge swatch with this, um, my, my stitches were much too small. It called for eight stitches per inch and I was getting 10, 10 and a half, which is why I had to get a different set of needles. Um, these are 2.5 nine inch circulars. I don't remember the brand, <laughs> but there you go. That's my sock. And with that, that is my knitting progress my nervous, nervous knitting progress. <laughs> but let's get into cross stitch. So the first whip is albatrosses. And this is by Cute Patterns by Maria. You can find her on Etsy and I think she has her own shop, but she's a Russian pattern designer. And I'm stitching this on 36 count antique white linen. And I'm still working on the sky. Uh, getting a little bit further down and I'm going page by page on this. So I'm really just focusing on this part right here. So I think I have most of the sky done in this area and I can start working on the lighthouse and a little bit of green portion there. What's really weirding me out though, working on this is it kind of looks like when you go really far back, it looks like an evil cow. <laughs> so just so that I can give you nightmare fuel, uh, there's its eye and there's its like weird ear. And then it's like, I don't know, that's probably where its nose is. And then it's like two face where that's gone. I don't know, man. It just kind of looks like a cow to me. <laughs> But it's not. It's not a cow. It is sky. And it will eventually be filled in on the other side and it will not look like a cow. The next whip, 
that I have to show you is the stitchers code. So this is stitched on 32 count cream linen and it's by Stitchingly. It was originally released as a stitch along. All the patterns are released now, all the different parts. But there's really no good preview, which is why I didn't show you one. But I have the whole top banner done. <laughs> there's gonna be six. So this was actually, I think, released either as part one or like a pre part where you do this. And then the actual parts are these little squares. And the little squares have like these really cute sayings in them. And they involve talking about like parking or frogging or stash, stuff like that. And it's really cute. And it reminds me of Stitchrovia, the, the fonts that's used. And then there's like a little cute iconography and everything too. And there's really cute colors. So there's like the purples and the pinks, but then there's like these really popping blues and turquoises as well. So I'm very excited to stitch them. But I can't really show you what it's gonna look like. So you just are gonna have to follow along. <laughs> Even if you go to Stitchingly, the preview image really is just this. And then the rest of it's blurred out. So even if you go on the website, you're not really gonna see it. My best suggestion, if you're interested in stitching this, but you wanna see it ahead of time, look on Instagram. That's actually where I first saw this. So maybe try Stitchingly on Instagram or the Stitchers code. Maybe there's a hashtag for it. I'm really not sure. I think I was just scrolling r um, slash cross stitch. I didn't see this on Reddit. I saw this on um, just the hashtag cross stitch on Instagram, I think is where I saw this. But if you search far, hard enough on Instagram, I know you'll find this. If you want to see it. If not, follow along. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> All right. The last whip that I worked on that you've already seen is my forest monogram. Now, in my last video, I called this the D forest monogram. And that's because it's the letter D but it made it sound like deforest, like you're deforesting something. It's just the letter D and it's a forest monogram. So I'm just gonna start calling this my monogram <laughs> to uh, relieve any potential confusion. Now I stitched this on 28 count antique linen and I stitched it one over one. So you can see that it's pretty teeny stitches. It's not really focusing, but that's okay. And before I really just had that pillar done, but now I'm getting into the actual curve of the D. So it kind of looks like a letter, which is really exciting. And I think I'm actually about to start getting into the trees on this side as well which will give it a little bit of variation because this is just solid color. <laughs> um, so it was very meditative to stitch this, but maybe not the most. Uh, I didn't really have to think about it too much. So now I'll get into a little bit more inter interesting stuff. And this is by Cozy Evening Stitch. And I think I just picked this up on Etsy. Again, I'll have the pattern below if you're interested in stitching up a monogram for yourself. All right, new starts. I have four new starts and three of them are stitch alongs. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of crazy for starting three stitch alongs. Last year I did one stitch along. No, I did two stitch alongs but they were released at different parts of the month. I think they were released at different parts of the month. Now I don't remember, but I did two last year. I did the linen and threads, uh, Quaker friends and family. And I did the Chinese Zodiac by Tiny Modernist or Frosted Pumpkin. One of those two did Chinese Zodiac stitch along It'll be in the bottom <laughs> in case you want to see it. <laughs> but 
but I only did two last year and I could keep up with them fine. But now I'm doing three and I might start another one. I have a fabric for it. I'm waiting on a couple colors to come in. I don't want to start it without all of the floss. But yeah, I might be starting a fourth. So I'm going to show you the non stitch along first. <laughs> and this one is another pattern from Cute Patterns by Maria. It is called Flying to the Stars. And it is this cute little fox on a little asteroid with these really pretty flowers. I'm stitching this on 36 count wisteria. I believe this is lakeside linens. It is lakeside linens. And I'm doing, I'm doing two over two. And yeah, I start in the center. So I just started with the little bits of the asteroid. Um, I usually pick a color and I stitch in as much as I can on a single page. And then I care if I have a lot of thread left over, I'll start stitching into another page as well. So I'm really just working on the asteroid that's in the first top left page. <laughs> but yeah, it's not much, but it's a start. All right, the stitch alongs. So they're all mystery stitch alongs. So I don't know what the final piece is going to look like. So I'm not going to show you any cover pieces because it's just going to be blurred out anyways. But I'll show you my progress of where I am so far. So we've got made to create and I am completely caught up as of right now. This started um, in January, but it got released. A lot of stitch alongs get released on the first of the month. This one, I believe is the 25th. So there's only one part out right now. So I was able to catch up pretty easily. Um, it's called made to create. And so you can see that there's like a little paint bottle and it kind of looks like a little pencil and then a crochet hook and then a needle and a thread but it all makes the letter E. So, and this is the middle. So it's going to look like that. And it's quite wide. There's six parts and there's six letters in the word create. So I think this is E in create. And I'm very excited because this is going up in my craft room. And it's like, it's all these different types of crafts. So it's like, it's not even just stitching related. So it's like any sort of craftiness. I don't know. It's going to be perfect in any craft room, I think. I don't know. I'm excited for it. Just to like be surprised. And in the preview, there was a spool or a bobbin of floss. I can't really tell if it's a spool or a bobbin but it looked really cool. So I'm excited for the part where we get to stitch that. Maybe it'll be next month or I guess in like five days. It gets released in five days, guys, at least from when I'm filming. That's cool. I'm excited for that. But yeah, E in, I think the word create. Okay, the next stitch along that I chose to start I didn't realize how big the pattern is until I actually started stitching. So I am doing the Zodiac Signs by Tiny Modernist. And this is on 18 count Navy Ada. So this is actually a pretty high count Ada. I mean, I don't really stitch on 20 count, so it's high count for me. But these are just two of the signs. There's going to be It's going to be like that big. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty big. Um, before they even started releasing the parts, they actually put out the whole frame. So once I get this folded up, I can show you again. 
but you could actually have the entire frame already stitched, but because I was a little bit behind, like you can see that part and all the circles, that's all charted. So since I started this month in February, I did the February portion, and now I'm essentially playing catch up on January and the frame. Now, the thing with stitching frames without content is I don't trust my counting. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna stitch the frame as the different pieces are released that are close to the frame. So since I'm in this corner, I will probably stitch, ah, I will stitch this corner of the frame. And then I think March will be here. At which pit, uh, at which time I'll I'll continue like a little bit of the board uh, the bottom stuff, and then maybe along the top that way. So I am a little behind still, but I think I can catch up before March. I'm very excited for this though. I know I keep saying I'm excited, but I'm just I don't know. Cross stitch excites me. The other thing that I'm really trying to think of a different word than excited. The other thing that I'm jazzed about <laughs> is in the border, I haven't gotten to it yet, but in the border there's these little dots where it's like a single stitch and it's kind of supposed to make it a little sparkly. I think I'm going to skip those and I think I'm going to use beads instead, but I'm going to do it at the end. So we'll see i'm probably going to get b because there's there's three different tones of like this gold there's this medium there's this cream and then there's this darker one and i think there's even a there might even be one darker than this too so i might get beads that correspond with those three dmc colors because mill hill i haven't done a lot of beading but mill hill seems to be pretty good at matching DMC colors. So I'll probably just get something that's close to that, what's charted. And instead of doing stitches, I'm probably gonna do beads. And especially since this is kind of like a celestial thing, I think it'll give it a little bit of a sparkle that might be needed. I don't know. Yeah, that's the zodiac signs. Also featuring <laughs> my hoop mark. Okay, the next one, I remember the Sal being announced and it seemed interesting, but I wasn't super sure I wanted to stitch it until I started seeing progress of it on Instagram. And then I knew I had to stitch it. So this is, there is no planet B by Clouds Factory. And right now, this is almost the entirety of January. I don't have, and if you can tell, it uses sparkly floss, the Etoile, Etoile? I think it's Etoile. I didn't take French, so I am probably butchering that. But it uses the sparkly thread. You can kind of see it. It's the brown and then the black. And it uses sparkly white, but I don't have it yet. It was backordered, so it should be coming soon. But once I have the white, I can fill in the rest of the first part and then the first part will be done. And I've started on part two, this is the February. This is a rhino and there's gonna be a little sea otter, but I just love this because it's you're stitching endangered animals and then each pattern that comes out, so far only two have come out and each pattern features two animals. And after the pattern page, it gives you a little like introduction to each of the different animals and their endangered status and little facts about them in case you don't really know that much. This is an okapi. This is a black-footed ferret. This is a rhino, a black rhino, specifically. It's a black rhino. There's many types of rhinos. And then 
there's another animal here, which I will not name until I stitch. But I'm stitching this on the called for, well, the the suggested fabric, which is Ariel by Picture This Plus. I chose to do this on a 32 count so that I could do two over two, which is really one of my preferred ways of stitching. I really like 32 count fabric and 36 count fabric and stitching two over two on both. I don't think I've, I've stitched on Picture This Plus before. This is probably the nicest linen I've ever stitched on. It's so soft, it's thick, it's fluffy. I mean, I didn't think linen could be fluffy and actually still be linen, but it's so soft. I totally get why it's expensive now. I love it. And that's it. That's all the stitching. And that's all the knitting. And hopefully that's all the freezing weather. <laughs> If you liked any of the projects that I've shown you or feel inspired or enabled or any of that stitchy goodness, uh, feel free to hit subscribe or leave a comment below. Also feel free to check me out on Instagram. I'm under the exact same handle there, the needle and floss. With that, I'll see you guys in another couple weeks. Stay warm. Happy stitching guys.